Hello Data Wizards. Today we're going to speak about interactivity. So when we're speaking about interactivity, we're actually talking about the ability of a system, environment or technology to engage and respond to a human input or an action in real time. This kind of interaction allows us to influence the outcomes that we get from a system that we interact with, in this case, our data. So when we're talking about dynamic dashboards or data visualization, what we're actually talking about is exploring data dynamically. And today we are going to explore our data on this interactive dashboard that we're going to create from scratch. The interactivity in this kind of dashboards will empower your users to make better informed data driven decisions, will boost their engagement with data, and will enable even those with less data literacy to explore data in real time. Also ready to be analyzed in real time is this segue to Zebra BI. Boost data literacy of your company with the best visualizations on the market from Zebra BI. Download the Zebra charts and tables from the link in the description below. Just one more thing before we dive into Excel. We are going to be building this dashboard with only built-in functions and functionalities and no programming. That means that you can expect anything from slicers to pivot tables, but no visual basic. The only exception will be visualizations. And although you can create this kind of dashboard with native visuals as well, we are going to be using Zebra BI visuals. Zebra will give us an extra layer of interactivity that we are unable to get with native charts. Now let's go to Excel and I'll show you what I mean very soon. So welcome to Excel. This will be our canvas today and it's made with a rectangle in a perfect 16 by 9 ratio so you can easily take the whole dashboard and just paste it to your PowerPoint presentation. No, but I'm joking, don't really do that. If you really want to know how to link data effectively to PowerPoint, I'll link a video down below. Okay, but first things first, let's go and look at our data. All right, so in the beginning, we first have a few time columns, then we have our product category, our customers, our country, salesperson, business unit, groups of products, it looks like division of products, and then here under accounts, we have our main KPI, so costs, gross profit, and revenues. And as you can see, we also have these columns here for actual forecast plan and previous year. Uh, so now, of course, you can see that this data resembles something you would get from a planning tool. Uh, however, if you would get this data from your uh, data warehouse with SQL, it would probably look a little bit different. So the columns for actual forecast plan and previous year would actually be probably in a dimension in a single column. Uh, named something like different scenarios and we would only have a single column with values. So transforming that data into this format would be pretty easy by using Power Pivot to unpivot the certain columns. And if you would like a little tutorial on how to do that, write in the comments. So now that we know what kind of data we have, let's actually talk about what kind of dashboard we want to create with it. On the top left corner, I would have my most important KPIs, usually with just a year-on-year -year comparison. The top right would have a top KPIs shown in time, and the two bottom places, I would usually have KPIs by the two most important dimensions for my end client. For sales, my usual go-to is a location structure, something like point of sales, countries, etc. And on the other side, something like product categories or groups. Now let's do this. Let's insert our first pivot table that will be our top KPIs. So what I'll do is I'll go to source data, pick out this whole table, insert a pivot table, put it on an existing worksheet, so right here, and put it right next to our, there we go right next to our dashboard. And I'm pretty zoomed out here so you guys can see better, but maybe we can zoom in a little bit better. Should be perfect now for you guys to see. So you can see exactly what's going on on the dashboard and you can see all the pivot tables that are doing. All right. So now what we want to have in this pivot table is pretty much simple. 
actual for values and plan for values and we're going to do this sales dashboard today actual versus plan and of course we need here our account of course in the rows and there we go so now we have our first pivot table with our cost gross profit and revenues and now we could go and do some visualizations for this pivot table already but what i'd like to do is create all the pivot tables that we're going to need now and do the visualizations later in part two so it's easier to link in the video but before we move forward we have to give a friendly name to the pivot table we just made because it's going to be easier to reference it in the later stages of this video so to rename it just click on the pivot table go under pivot table analyze and here under pivot table name we're going to name it kpis there we go press enter and this table has now a nice name the second table we're going to do is for our right side of the chart right here which is our time series chart to make this a little easier we can simply copy the table that we made before and just paste it down here all right and now we just have to replace the fields so we'll just put accounts up here and we will also add the months all right there we go now that you understood how to do this let's speed this part up a little bit all right we have our pivot tables and now we're ready for our visualizations i just moved a little bit to the left so we can see our canvas a little bit better and now inserting our charts it's pretty easy just click on a pivot table go under insert choose my add-ins and i think zebra tables will be the best for our main KPI showcase I'll make it a little bit smaller so we can get it like this and now I can freely move it around you can see it's actually very responsive but now if we want we can also hold we can also hold the alt key and uh, snap it to the grid right now this looks perfect uh, then as we said we need one for our chart as well here so let's insert a zebra bi chart and okay we get nice small multiples but right now what we would like is something like this and so now that we have this let's insert our next chart okay so go under my add-ins again use charts and now i actually like the waterfall chart like this however what i'd like to do is actually just point it in the vertical direction and then what we're going to do is we're just gonna make it a little bit smaller because we don't have so much room here and now let's do our last pivot table we click go to my add-ins and let's do tables again for countries all right and let's close it like this so we can just see one kpi this should be fine make them a little, make it a little smaller so now that we have our table positioned pretty nicely there's one more thing that we can do because there's so many countries we can use the top and function right here and just show a little bit less because this is too much nobody's gonna go look at the last few countries right here on the main dashboard for that maybe we'd like to make a more detailed shit down the line okay so now just top n and we'll choose eight and yeah i think this is perfect okay so not too much and it looks perfect so now that we have our visualizations it's time to start making this chart interactive and the first thing that we're going to do and i think would benefit us the most is something where we could filter our years and months so just the time series that we're looking at because right now we're showing just all the data that we have all right so let's do this the easiest way to do this and i think the cleanest is to just copy a pivot table that we already have so just like this open up the field list and i'll just move this a little bit so you can see what's happening and now what we want is to put years and months here into the filter into the filter placeholders and just put all of the other values away and now we're left with this small little pivot table 
that we can just simply copy or move right here onto our dashboard, just like that. And now what we have here is two buttons with which we will be able to choose the time frame that we want to use for all of the comparisons for these charts. Let's just change the design so it looks a little bit better. All right, I think this looks better. But now if we choose here on year, let's say 2022, nothing happens. And well, this is pretty logical because now what we have to do is connect all of these pivot tables with slicers. To do this, it's pretty simple. Just click on any pivot table, go under insert and find slicer. Click on slicer and now we can choose the fields that we want to filter throughout these tables. So let's just do it. Years, months, country, business unit, account, and group. I think that's all of them, right? All right, click OK. All right, and there are our slicers. All right, so now I'll just position them somewhere so you guys can see a little bit better. And now I have to pick which slicer actually affects which pivot table. And that's pretty easy to do as well. Just click on the slicer, go under report connections, and right here, we now see that on the sheet home, which is our sheet that we're on right now, we have these pivot tables. And right now, this year pivot table only affects the KPIs one. But now if we just check box all the others, so home top filters is my filter table. The country is the pivot table that is for our left lower chart business unit for our right lower chart and of course months is for my top right chart click ok and now what will happen is if we move here and we choose and we choose year 2022 select ok we can see that all the data automatically changes and now let me just prepare all the other ones as well All right, and now I set up my slicers. So they filter all the other tables except for the table from which they were made. So let's say if country, country filters all the other tables except for the table of country. And this now allows me to make something truly magical. How you would usually use slicers is that you would go to a slicer click on something, let's say Australia here, and the slicer would slice up all your data so you get your, your right values. But what I can do now with Zebra BI is something only seen before in Power BI and similar tools. If I just want to see revenues, I can just click here and it will cross filter all of my other visuals to just show me my revenues. And you can see here it says revenue, revenue, revenue. If I want to see cost, I'll click on cost and I can see cost, cost, cost on all my other visuals. Or maybe I'd like to see how United States is doing. Or maybe I just want to know what's going on with baby care. There we go. We can cross filter everything right from our visuals and get all the insights. So thank you for watching. We create an awesome dashboard that also allows you to cross filter your data with visuals, just like you're able to do that with other tools like Power BI. And don't forget that you can bring your Excel game into 2023 by downloading our visuals from the description below. Hey, if you want more Excel content, check out how to link data from this awesome dashboard to PowerPoint right down here. And if you want more BI content, we have it right down there. See you soon, Data Wizards!